Good morning. Uh, today we uh, continue looking at the Gospel of Luke. Uh, Saturday we just got through the first 20 chapters of verse 1 in our assigned reading. And so yesterday's reading and today's take us from verses 21 through 56. And uh, Saturday we concluded with the angel having told Zechariah that he would be mute until these things took place. And today's reading begins, Zechariah comes back out from behind the, 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 in the, in the temple there, and people are waiting and watching for him, and, and he's unable to speak. He's unable to tell them of anything. You know, I, 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 I don't know what the people expected, if there was, you know, if they were hoping that there would be a blessing from the Lord. I mean, who, I, I don't understand for sure what was going on there, but he couldn't speak to them. And, and, and Luke tells us they realized that he had seen a vision. You know, so this was of great importance. And it says that Zechariah motioned to them, but he could not speak. And so we wonder, well, why didn't he just write a note? Well, you know, not everybody, very few people, as a matter of fact, could read and write in, in that time. And, you know, even the priests, um, most of them, I'm sure, couldn't read and write. They were... The scribes, that was their job to, to write and to recopy and to read and to do all that. And, and, um, but most of their knowledge and their learning, I mean, it, it was in their heads. It's just like the, you know, the, uh, so many of our customs and so many, you know, I mean, we tell stories of, of history and we need to know that history and um, for everything to go on that way. But Zechariah couldn't communicate with him. And so then it says, at his time of service, he went home. And the time of service for a priest, the priests were divided, um, according to what I remember, into 24 groups, each of them serving one week and then being off 23 weeks and then serving one week, you know, as this group. And it had been Zechariah's turn. He was drawn to go back, you know, behind the curtain for this uh, um, purpose that, that he was there when he had the visitation from Gabriel. But his, so his time of service was up after a, roughly a week. Uh, the beginning of Sabbath to the beginning of Sabbath the next time was, was the week's service. So he went home to Elizabeth then after that. And it says that his wife Elizabeth conceived. And, and we know that they were both elderly because that's Luke told us that in like verse 5 or something back in there. Uh, poor before that even, but so Elizabeth conceived when she was quite quite elderly, and she hid herself away. It says for five months, and part of that was that you know for a, for a woman or for a couple to be childless was kind of an embarrassment, and it's not quite so much today. Although people will you know kind of wonder and speculate sometimes, but. But Elizabeth had been, in you know, Luke said, so she had endured much disgrace among her people. So she kind of put herself in seclusion. And at the sixth month of her pregnancy, it says, you know, verse 26, in the sixth month, that's the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel then came to this young girl named Mary. And we know that story well, too, how the angel came and said, uh, do not be afraid, for, O highly favored one, for the Lord is with you. And it says that Mary was perplexed and pondered what this meant. And later on, we will also again read and say, and you will say that Mary pondered all of these things in her heart. You know, to be perplexed means to, to wonder, to be a little bit confused, to be not sure. And to ponder means to, to think deeply, to meditate upon something. It doesn't mean, you know, just not a quick passing thought, but to, you know, really contemplate what's going on. And I sometimes wonder if part of the angel's do not be afraid to marry, you, you know, because it doesn't say she is filled with fear at the vision of Gabriel. I mean, I would be. But maybe part of the do not be afraid is the reassurance that even though you are a virgin, even though you are very young, you're going to be pregnant. So don't be afraid of the ridicule, the shame, the scorn. Don't be afraid of being rejected because this is all a part of God's plan. So go ahead and, and you know, go on with, with life and know all things are going to be okay. And we know the story of, of, 
of her husband or her betrothed husband. You know, they're not married yet, but we, we know all of those things. And, uh, and the angel Gabriel, the same Gabriel that had gone to Zechariah six months earlier, says to Mary, you know, your cousin Elizabeth is pregnant also in her old age. And Mary goes to Elizabeth and spends three months with Elizabeth. And, um, and when she gets there, you know, the Bible tells us that when Mary was seen by Elizabeth, she felt a child leap within her womb. And Elizabeth says to Mary, why am I so blessed that the mother of my Lord would come to see me? So Elizabeth, in her old age, knowing that this pregnancy that she has is a gift from God somehow, also recognizes in Mary, who is just newly pregnant, that Mary is carrying the child who will be the Lord, the Messiah, the Savior, the one that we call Jesus Christ. Mary sees that, and she recognizes that, and she is in awe of that. And she says, For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped, and blessed is he who, she who believes that there would be a fulfillment spoken to her by the Lord. So Elizabeth recognizes the Lord, and he's no more than just, you know, just a few cells starting to become a being, become a life, to become our Savior. She recognizes him at that early stage. And we'll read on not so awful for much further into Luke after Jesus is born that, um, that as, as Jesus comes to the temple again, that two people recognize him as, as the Lord who have been waiting and watching for many years. But Mary's response to Elizabeth is what we've known as the Magnificat. And it always, when I read this and when I come to this point in the Bible, the, the whole and evening prayer service comes to mind and, and Mary's singing, my soul proclaims your greatness, O Lord. I mean, it's just, I mean, I can just, uh, when you put the words to music, it just, I mean, you know, they stick with you a lot more that way. And, and, and it, and it's just this song of praise that Mary comes with, you know, um, thanking God and reminding herself of the blessings. And, and um, you know, she says, surely now all generations will call me blessed. And, and, and we do. I mean, uh, as Lutherans, we don't make her holy and we don't pray to her, but, but we realize that there was something special about Mary that God chose her for this special task of bearing the child who would be our Savior. And she talks about Jesus. She talks about God. You know, the Mighty One has done great things. His mercy is for those who fear Him and respect Him for generation to generation. And, you know, she just... It's such an awesome song of, of praise and thanksgiving that Mary comes with. And, and I think about... You know, when it said that she was perplexed and pondered what all of these things meant, that as she was doing her pondering, you know, a lot of this came to her. You know, and to think about that, you know, this is a young girl. I mean, she's, you know, sometimes we're told she could be 14, 13, 14, 16. We don't know just how old Mary was for sure. But for this young girl to come with with such awesome song of praise and, and thanksgiving and um, understanding of who the Savior is. And it's one more reminder to me that when Jesus says, unless one comes as a little child with an open and trusting heart, able to believe, you know, this not having, not having to have everything written down in hard, fast, concrete stuff, but to be able to just believe to trust. And that's what I get from, from the Magnificat. That's what I get from the story of Mary hearing the message from the angel Gabriel. I mean, Zechariah questioned and Zechariah was mute until the child was born. And we'll read into that, you know, before, pretty quick here. But when Mary asked, how can this be? 
you know? I mean, that was, that was Mary's question, you know? She said, how can this be? Uh, and the angel just reassured her, just reassured her that everything was going to be okay. And I think that's the, the greatest blessing that, that God gives to us is the reassurance of that everything is going to be okay. Why? Because Jesus lived, he died, and he lives now in a place that he has prepared for you and for me. So may the joy of the news of the conception of Jesus Christ uplift us and hold us strong in our faith, especially during this time of, of, of Lent, as we're coming up to the, to the Sunday of the Passion, Palm Sunday, uh, just a couple of weeks before Easter. But may the joy of the news of the conception of the child reassure us as we live these next couple of weeks and live through the arrest, crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. May God's joy fill your heart as he did Mary's.